what's up guys welcome back to the channel in this video we are going to be installing our bmw weld in turnover ball also known as fifth wheel hitch into this custom built pipeline style welding bed if you're new around here thanks for being here check out our website and our online store arosswelding.com A lot of people ask if it's okay for the fifth wheel hitch to be at the back of the truck. In my opinion, and from my peers and from the little I know about hauling trailers, fifth wheel trailers, it is not ideal for your fifth wheel hitch to be behind the axles. But from my real world experience and eight years of pipeline welding and pulling a trailer with my truck with this same exact positioning, I haven't had any problems and I know several guys that have traveled up and down the road all over America pulling their fifth wheel this exact same way. And the only reason that we position it back here whenever we build our custom beds, or at least the reason I did, is because of the position of the welding machine. Just like on this particular bed, the bottles are going to be laying down right here, our two oxygen bottles. So therefore our weld machine has to sit behind it. Therefore, your fifth wheel hitch can't be right on top of the center of the axle or technically a little bit in front of. So if a guy didn't feel comfortable putting his fifth wheel hitch at the back of the truck, you could always swap the welding machine with your bottles. That's how a lot of older welding rigs were built. The one thing that's practical about the welding machine being right here versus up against the cab is you can get to both sides of your welding machine a little bit easier. All right, now that we've got our fifth wheel plate tacked in place, it's time to drill a hole for our rod to actually hold our fifth wheel ball in. I believe I used a 5 8 or maybe just a skosh bigger than a 5 8 drill bit. I've got my mag drill. This is a super handy situation. I was able to put my mag drill on its side and drill the hole. Worked pretty good. A lot of you have asked about this Viver brand of mag drill. I haven't talked about it much because I haven't used it long enough to know whether I like it or not. To make a long story short, the only reason I have purchased this cheaper brand of mag drill is because for one, I do not use a mag drill very often, so I don't necessarily need a more expensive one. But for two, I took my Hogan mag drill to the shop to get it fixed because something was wrong with it. And they've had it for over in Edmond, some tool place. They've had it for like two years, I've called them. They hardly ever call me back. I mean, I, I literally need to go chase it down. I just haven't taken the time. And since they're having all kinds of issues, I come across this Viva brand on the internet. So I bought it since it was cheaper. All right, so now that we got our hole drilled, that way we can get to our lever from inside our toolbox. By the way, I got lucky right here. We did get into our channel a little bit. Luckily everything worked out, but I did, for some reason that bit kind of went upwards, I guess, or something. Uh, so I was, so I did have to take my die grinder and grind right here a little bit to get the, uh, to make this slot in the channel totally straight, if you will. And I wasn't thinking on this, for some reason I thought I was going to come from this way. So there was a washer right here that I ground off so I could get this through this hole. But I obviously didn't think about the space over here. I can't even get it in from over here. But I was able to rope it in from this side. Like so. So moral of the story, think ahead when it comes to putting this rod in. And then I will end up tacking another washer back on here and then something else back here and then another little tab apparatus that way whenever you pull this rod the tension is proper and then i will actually end up tacking another washer on here after i set the my uh, spring exactly where it needs to be whenever we pull this rod we don't want it coming out too far 
So I'll put a stop uh, back and then I'll put a stop for the tension of the spring and then I'll also put another tab somewhere, I don't know where yet, to where whenever I pull it out and twist this rod a certain way, it locks in place. That way you can take your ball in and out without having to hold your rod. Good. Come on, boys. I think I got it figured out. Gonna have a total of four nuts. One, two, three, four nuts in this plate. And then I'll have something on this nut that turns and latches onto something right here. So there it is, we've got it all tacked up. Now all we'll have to do is just put some weld here and I'll actually run a bead across here and across here, sand this down, and then we'll be setting a piece of quarter inch plate up here. We'll have a trunk up here. That trunk will be in another video. Whenever I set this in here, I was thinking, man, I could almost beef this up some more, you know, run a piece underneath here or, you know, uh, something, but then I remembered I'm actually going to be putting in some, some more of this two square three sixteenths right in this corner. Same on the other side. So not only is this piece going to be welded to here and to this four inch channel, it's also going to be welded to another piece of square tubing going all the way up to that one. And then we're going to be putting a piece of quarter inch plate on this and we'll be welding that quarter inch plate on the bottom to these cross members. So all that to say is I believe by the time we get everything tied together and the quarter inch plate on here and that two inch square tubing tied to this, I believe this will be plenty stout enough. Another thing I wanted to mention is because not only can you pull a regular gooseneck trailer like this, but you can also remove the ball itself and put your fifth wheel hitch in here. If you wanna pull your camper the actual term is fifth wheel, like a, like with a kingpin situation, like a semi does. That's how I pulled my trailer the last couple of pipeline jobs I worked. I personally like pulling my camper with the kingpin versus the gooseneck, but I did pull our trailer with a gooseneck ball for several years with my wife's truck or my truck. And lastly, the neat thing about this turnover ball is you can turn it over whenever you're not pulling a trailer and everything's nice and flush back here. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it answered the question that we get quite a bit about why we have our fifth wheel hitches at the back of our welding bed and if it pulls all right with the fifth wheel hitch back here. Questions like that we get quite often. I hope it gave you some ideas, some confidence, whatever it may be. Hopefully it was helpful and you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button Thanks for coming along with us today. Like I said, if you're new around here, check out our website. If you have any questions about this video, you can leave them down in the comments below or 
you can text them to 405-643-7176. I hope you have an awesome day, an awesome weekend, evening, whatever time of day you may be watching this. And remember, learn something every day.